Good morning. This is fellow citizens of the household of God. Monday morning espresso shot. We thank God for a powerful word this morning. I pray that all will be in a place to be able to receive a word from God, to comprehend the word from God, and to apply the word of God. Please take this next moment to grab pen, paper, Bibles, and get ready for a powerful word from the Lord. Again, this is fellow citizens of the household of God, Monday morning, espresso shot. All right, we're going to open up with the word of prayer and then jump right into the word of God. So if you would just join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you and we bless you. We ask you for forgiveness of all sin. Sins of the mind, the body, and the spirit. God, make us ready. Make us your people ready to receive a word from you. Anoint our ears that we may hear what the spirit is saying unto us. Then God, anoint my mouth that I may speak only what you've said. God, allow the believer to receive your word, to apply your word, and to be obedient that we may obtain the promises of God. In Jesus' name we pray. All those who agree, say amen. All right. Set your table. The Monday morning espresso shot is going to speak to us concerning our setting of the table in order for God to feed us the appropriate food we need for each and every day. What food can you digest? What things will not be good for you? What nourishes my body, my mind, and my soul with nourishment from God? What are the requirements of my dietary restrictions? Am I lactose intolerant? Am I, am I, uh, what's the thing that's in bread? I forgot. Uh, some people don't want it. Uh, anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. Whatever your dietary restrictions are, God knows. God brought to uh, my mind this morning the fact that we are in a shortage for baby formula. Well, my question is, why is there a shortage when God gave the solution from the beginning? God gave women the production of milk. And we've gotten so worldly oriented that we've left that out. Many women don't breastfeed anymore. They depend on the companies to formulate formulas for their children. And that would solve all of the formula shortages if women would just breastfeed. Somebody might argue and get upset. Please don't get upset with me. I do understand that there are some circumstances and some situations where a woman can't breastfeed, whereby formula is needed. I get that. But it seems more so now to be a choice, more so than a necessity of need. They, they, they choose not to. God already resolved that issue. So what God is saying to us is, I know what nourishment you need in order to be productive in your day, in order to accomplish the things that I've set before you. All I need you to do is set the table. How do we set the table? Let's look at Proverbs 30 and 8. Proverbs 30 and 8. And it reads, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. God, you have to, re no, we have to remove, not God. We have to remove those things that we tend to put on God for our feeding. Either we want to be rich, we want to be famous, we want to be at the top of the food chain in our companies, you have to remove all of those demands off of God and receive from God the convenient food that is tailored to you. 
to accomplish the greatness that God has set before you. See, God sets greatness before us. He always has. He always has victory in line for our lives. We are the ones that put restrictions on the food supply from God. God gave me, look, sometimes you don't want to eat the vegetables set on your plate as a child. Sometimes you don't want to eat certain cuts of meat. Sometimes you don't eat certain types of meat. My thing is this, if you become hungry and what I have to give you will feed you, but you refuse it because you say, I don't eat that. Well, then you're not hungry. If you are hungry, and I provide you with something to eat, but then you turn to me and you say, but I don't eat that. Then you're not hungry. See, God knows what our spirit needs. God knows what our journey needs in order to nourish us for the duration of the journey for each and every day. God knows. So we have to begin by setting the table. How do I set the table? I begin by praying and removing my desires out of the way, removing my restrictions out of the way. God knows my dietary needs. He knows if I'm going to be allergic to something or if something is going to disrupt. But he also knows what's needed in order to disrupt the plan of the enemy in my life. See, that's what y'all not getting. God knows what to feed you that disrupts the line of the enemy's influence in your life. The reason why we don't always want what God is feeding is because we don't want to sever the connection to the world. We don't want to let the world go. So what we have to do is we have to move forward and allow God to separate us from the... That's why your first preparation for setting the table is Proverbs 38, remove far from me vanity and lies. God, get the propaganda out. Get the drama out. He said, give me neither poverty nor riches. God, I'm not seeking to be famous. I'm not seeking to be uh, uh, the, the things that the world desires. But God, I want you to feed me with food convenient for me. God, give me what I need in order to accomplish what you've set for my hands to do. God has, in his word, set up multiple places where he tells us he's feeding us. What may come as a surprise to you is the fact that some of us won't sit down to the table because we're afraid of what God is serving. If God is going to tell you to no longer do something and you really like to do it, you don't want to sit down to the table and eat that. You only want the good things of God. That's why this weekend God gave a word talking about salt, sugar, or truth. You don't want the truth. You want the sugar. Or you want the salt. What's the salt? The juicy stuff, the drama stuff. How preachers preach on other preachers and preach on other churches and preach how other people are going to hell because they're not in the... You want that kind of drama. That's that salt. That's that too salty for consumption. You understand? Salt can be... A preservative, salt can be an enhancer, salt can also be something that destroys. Let's look at Matthew 6 and 11. It is not a strange thing that we should adapt certain things in our lives. I'm going to get the first two are certain things that you should adapt. The first one is our father prayer. The second one is the Lord is Psalms 23. Now, let's look at Matthew 6 and 11. In this, it began with our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then in verse 11, he says this. Give us this day our daily bread. You can't get no simpler than that. Feed me, God. Feed me my daily nourishment that will help me be sustained throughout the total of today to have the victories of God. That's why it's important for us to know how to set the table. 
Jesus told them in this example right here, he said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, how do I set the table for God to begin to feed me what he desires? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. He goes on and says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. <sighs> forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who have hurt us, who have... Some of y'all can't get past certain parts of the meal because you don't want to accept the vegetables. The vegetables say you've got to forgive others in order to be forgiven. You don't want that vegetable. That's that broccoli or that asparagus or those carrots. You don't want that. You just want the mashed potatoes, the stuff that's good to the palate that, that has that certain... God says, no, I'm going to serve you a complete meal and I need you to consume it all because it all has a design and a purpose in order to get you to a victory. I have, everybody wants the victories of God, but nobody wants to finish, finish the meal he sets before you. Look at Psalms 23. He began Psalms 23 with the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I won't go hungry. I'm not going to have need of anything. You begin to apply the word of God, setting the table for God to feel free because you've cleansed the environment. You've allowed God to come in and set up and begin to feed you. You got to remove the restrictions. You can't tell God, well, God, I don't eat that. What? What? When you're hungry, you'll eat. Don't wait till the day of judgment to get hungry. It's too late. No more food is being served then. Now you're standing there having to face the chef who had to face your rejection of his food. Somebody better catch that. Y'all don't want to eat certain meals. One day you got to go face that chef. One day you got to stand there before God and say, well, God, we, we didn't know you a lie. I fed it to you, but you rejected it. I gave it to you in order to get you beyond this trouble that you are being presented with now that keeps you from coming in further into the gate. I presented you with the necessary nourishment to get over that. You didn't want it. You rejected it. You felt like what the world was serving tasted better because it was a tasty cake, because it was a cinnamon roll, cinnamon bun, because it had sugar on it. God said, hold up now. I know the nourishment you need. I do give you snacks. I do give you treats. Uh, how do I know that? Go ahead and keep repeating Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Listen. Listen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou fear no evil, for thou art with me, thou rod, thy staff, that comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy. So follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. Even when you deal with the full meal of God, God is going to give you those necessary things. See, there are cereal and certain foods that you can buy. And if you will read the back, it'll tell you it's been fortified with minerals and vitamins. What does that mean? Well, where there was an absence and we saw that there needed to be something added to we saw that there was need of a boost of a certain vibe. We added it to it. That means that this food has been fortified with the necessary items that we feel will help you accomplish the victory of your journey. So certain cereal says been fortified with vitamin E and vitamin C, D, da, 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 da. Now, God says, I fortified everything I feed you. I put the amount of nourishment needed for the day's accomplishment in everything I feed you. All you got to do is sit down, set the table, and eat. Stop telling the chef what you don't like, 
what you don't want to eat. Just because it doesn't jive with what you're trying to live. Y'all need to get out of that. The way we're going to be able to accomplish the things ahead of us in life is to sit down, set the table. How do I set the table? I told you, you can begin with Proverbs 30 and 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. God, remove from me this foolishness that I tend to dwell in. God, remove from me these things that are deceitful to me. When he said vanity and lies, that deals with all the pretty stuff and all the deceit. He says, give me neither poverty nor riches. I'm not asking you for anything, God. But I am going to say, feed me with food convenient for me. God, you know my diet. You know my restrictions. You know what I can and cannot handle. Now, as we continue on in the word of God, we see in Isaiah 40 and 11. Verse 11, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. God says, listen, I'm going to feed you so well, sometimes you're going to be full and I'm going to have to carry you. I'm going to feed you so well, I'm going to pull you into me and you're going to feel the love. You're going to feel the embrace. He's still talking. See, God wants to feed us. We are the ones that get up from the table and tell God we don't eat that. Sometimes we choose. Oh, y'all better hear this. We choose to go sit under preachers and ministers who only feed us milk. Because that's all we want. We don't want to spiritually, spiritually mature in order to be fed meat. We don't want that. We want to remain on milk. That's why you got a milk shortage. It's too many, too many milk givers out there. People need to grow and mature and start to receive the meat of God. What's the meat of God? The changes in your life that you don't want. The changes in your journey that help you achieve the higher heights and deeper depths in God. You, you don't want that. That's that vegetable. That's that, that meat, that, that substance that's going, that sustaining protein that's going to help you uh, make the journey, last the race. You don't want that. Look at 1 Corinthians 3, 2. 1 Corinthians 3, 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. God says, I fed you with milk and not meat because you wasn't ready for me. You couldn't digest it. That's how I know God is familiar with my restrictions. In certain areas of your life, he'll feed you milk. In certain areas of your life, he needs to feed you meat in order for you to be it. Y'all got to catch it. But you've got to be able to set the table for God to come in. God doesn't mind coming into your kitchen and cooking. Jesus said it multiple times, I'll come in and sup with you. And then you'll sup with me. I'll come into your house and I'll cook. But I need you to set the table and set the environment that I would feel free to serve you what's needed for your life. I need to come in and make some changes to your diet. You are sitting under the influence of the world too often, absorbing the things of the world, making it seem like it's right with me. I need to come in and change your diet. I need to come in and change some things. I need you to set the table. I need you to let me in. Let me feel free to, to speak, to serve you the food that you need in order to accomplish the journey I've set before you. When we look at Hebrews 5, 13 through 14. It's going to tell us that milk is for babes and strong meat for full-aged folk. Some of y'all want to sit at the adult table, but you didn't bring the utensils nor the palate to deal with the food that will be set before you. Y'all, 
Catch that. Some of y'all want to sit at the grown-up table, but you ain't grown up yet. Listen, Hebrews 5, 13 through 14, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You start to mature spiritually when you know what God is serving you is right. And that it goes against what you want, which would be evil. And you make the adjustment. That's how you know you've got that spiritual maturity. That's how you know you eat meat. When God can tell you something and you accept it. God can, can, can chastise you, tell you strong. Now, look, you don't need to do this anymore. You've, you've advanced. That's when you know you're taking in some meat. Preachers don't want to serve you milk, meat. They only want to serve you milk. Why? Because with milk, I can add sugar. I can add all kind of taste bud awakening things to milk. Y'all know how many formulas out there? I, I didn't know this, but I thought when I was coming up, there was a couple on the market, you know, Infamil and Similac. And one was made one way and another was made another way. Now they got so many brands. so Not so many brands, but so many types. So many types of different types of Infamil, different types of Similac, different types of this to address certain issues. If y'all don't understand that God knows the genetic makeup of each and every person. And he knows what to serve you in order to maximize your body's usage of that which is what he's serving you to accomplish that which he set before you. Some of y'all don't want that though because we've become complacent and we've become comfortable in our lifestyles. How dare God come in and interrupt us? Who is he? How dare him come in and change the menu? What preacher is this? We voted him in? Why is he coming in here talking about we need to stop doing this and we need stuff? Who is he? That's when you know your diet is getting ready to change and roll over into meat and you start rejecting. You start pushing the plate away. Well, I don't eat that. But you're hungry. You're hungry for the word, but there are certain things you just don't want to eat. <sighs> then God says, listen, I'm going to serve you something that's going to help you make it through the day, that's going to sustain your energy level all day and allow you to be able to be victorious. And at the end of the day, you'll look back and say, it was only by the grace of God. Listen, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. I need y'all not to skip over that. You've got to understand the food that God serves you allows you not to be consumed by the world because his compassions fail not. What doesn't fail? His compassions. God knows that we have difficulties and we have struggles. He says, but his compassion is that buffer, that buffer that comes in and says, okay, I need you to cover this. And it's a buffer. Compassion. Listen, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. 24, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. 25, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. 26, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. You've got to understand God is a complete setter of food portions that you need to accomplish each task of, of the day. And he knows what sizable portion you need. You know, they've tried the science of breaking down a diet of how portions are served and sometimes we eat too much of this and too much of that. Well, God told us this weekend, y'all better stop eating slop. It's gonna make you fat, but your health won't be anything worth having. We got a lot of fat Christians that are dying from fat. We got a lot of fat Christians that are dying from high blood pressure. Dying from different things. 
because we just overfat. Because we're eating slop. We're not eating the nutrition of God. We push away the nutrition of God. We push away the tape, the, 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 the food plate that God sets before us. We push that away. We only want what we've been having, which was milk. When you can't survive on milk your whole life. At some point, your body begins to grow past the need of milk. And it begins to reject milk. Some people can drink milk their whole lives. Other folks can't. The body can't tolerate milk anymore. Well, so now I need to learn how to eat. I need to have utensils that I eat with. I need to learn how to put the food from the plate into my mouth. I can no longer just sit there and let a bottle be put in my mouth. I have to learn how to serve myself the food. I have to, God has said, did he not say? He prepared the table before me in the presence of my, he prepares the table. He puts the food out there. If you don't get it, that's your fault. If you don't reach around and say, pass me, could you pass me the green beans? Could you pass me the... He's going to set the table with the appropriate nourishment that you need to accomplish the journey he set for in your life. Who better to know what you need in your life spiritually than the God who said it? He knows your journey. He knows what's ahead of you. So he's going to set the table spiritually adequate with a... Pla Listen... He's going to set you up with a buffet where you're going to have more than enough food to do the journey. Can you get fat spiritually? Absolutely. Stay in your word. That's the only fatness that you can actually obtain that will not do you harm. Spiritual fatness. You just get fat in the spirit. You just, oh, thank you, God. You... Some of y'all going to catch that. This is how we make it through the week of a world that is hitting us with a barrage of bullets, a barrage of missiles, a barrage of, of anti-tank, anti-this, and all of these landmines that we tend to walk on and, and, and blow off a leg. All of a sudden, you go to a meeting and somebody cut your legs off because you stepped on a landmine. You didn't know it was there. This is how you get prepared for these surprises of the world. You set your table. You let God serve you. The awareness of the enemy around you. God's going to serve that to you. He'll serve you your awareness. He's going to awaken you so that you can see the enemy. So you can discern when the enemy comes in the room. Some of y'all are entering into life's task without the correct nourishment from God. Whereby you're failing and don't know why you're failing. Well, you didn't set the table and let God serve you what you needed in order to accomplish what he said before you. So set your table. Let God feed you. Take in the nourishment of God. Reject the foolishness of the world and accomplish the greatness that God said before you. God bless you. Thank you. That that was uh, this morning's message for Monday morning espresso shot. We pray that you have received and have been fed the word of God know now how to apply the word of God, set the environment for God to come in and watch him come in and set the environment for your victory in Jesus name. God bless you. Thank you. Join us Wednesday night for Wednesday night Bible study where we will be covering Hosea chapter 11. Thank you. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.